sorry, my people, you guys know that this Facebook, that's why we need our own. We need our own. Um, I think we, we have a brother that is working on this. I can't wait for him to bring out his own Facebook. These people are playing games when they know that we are speaking the truth. The best thing that they could do is to disrupt our flow. But it's okay. We are smarter than our enemies. Also, they let them turn it off 100 times. We'll continue to talk to our people. We'll continue to evangelize to our people. We'll continue to let them know, for those of them that are still sleeping, to let them know what these people are doing to us. Because the earlier we wake up, especially in our lifetime, the earlier we wake up, the earlier we can take back what the enemy has stolen from us because they have stolen a lot. They have stolen so much that all their children are obese now. You will see somebody 20 years old and they are limping because the fat on their body is so much they cannot walk. So we will continue to uh, do what we need to do. Facebook, if you like, turn it off, cut it off, blink it down. We will continue to do what we are doing. You will never stop us. So you guys will see that when we speak about mental toughness, God put it in all of these people. This is where the mental stop toughness started with. So my sister, please go ahead. Yes, my sister, that meant because God knew what we'll go through. And he put that mental toughness in us, that as you're killing us, we are coming as you know, the more you're doing us, we, are, we, are, we just go and uh, reappear again, you understand? So that mental toughness, and that's why we're encouraging our people to change what we're eating. So even increase, because we don't want, we have mental toughness, but our children will not have mental toughness because we have used chemicals to poison their brain cells, and they're not able to reason very well. That's why your children do some of the things they do. And when they do it, you wonder. They just don't know. They don't know. Because you have poisoned their brain cells. Mm -hmm. So they are not able to reason the way. Even some of our men that we are complaining about, because we have been feeding them with magis, magis, no, this, all this thing. That's why they can't reason like our forefathers. Imagine if they could reason like our forefathers for the English that's speaking. Uh -uh. I am not going to know. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So that's why we're bringing back this whole thing to the table of our mothers. Please, let's change what we feed our people. Let's stop poisoning the brain cells of our people. Stop giving them soda. Uh, that is the mineral, what we call mineral, you know, like Altama, when you say mineral, instead of thinking, uh, <laughs> it's uh, in Jaffa, in Zoo, what they call mineral, Pepsi, Coca-Cola. It's like, if you go and bring something like ants, put the ants inside a, a, a cup of uh, uh, sugar, see how the ants will react. The ants will dry up. Osmosis alone will even destroy the ants. Then you, then you, are, you, are, you are carrying and bombarding yourself with Sugar, 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 drinking sugar. Even the orange juice you are drinking is sugar. We say go back, take the, the, the one that are organic. You are even where you will get this thing. It's very simple and straightforward. Purple, orange, bring it and eat it the way we used to eat it in those days. Give children that. Forget this the orange juice and whatever juice that they just mix some chemicals and put water inside and you start drinking. Those things are just damaging your brain cells. It is time for us to eliminate the culture that we borrowed from the white man and go back to who we used to be. Like David in the Bible. When he was about to face Goliath, Saul gave him all the weapons, gave him all the gadgets that he used to wear. David wore it. He looked, he said, no, bam, 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 yeah, I walk. This thing is just too heavy on me. It's not working for me. You know, I say, oh, God, oh, God, so, oh, I know you love me. Well, take your property and let me use my catapult and my stone. That's what I'm used to. Because it's better for you to use a tool you're used to than for you to borrow a tool that you don't even understand what it is. Because you might just turn it around and shoot yourself and die. Mm. That's the danger of using borrowed tools. Yes, sir. Tools that you don't know anything about. You turn it into face you, shelters, you turn the shelters, you spray, you spray, you spray your eyes instead of spraying the mosquito. <laughs> because, you don't, <laughs> because you don't understand how the thing was built. That there's a hole that is supposed to face in front and you press the head. No, give it to one grandmama to turn it and face herself as So it's time for us to change our music. Even our music. Even the one that used to worship God in the church. It's time to begin to use what works. It's time to begin to move. Even our parents, that dress move. 
Biafra, you see my sister looking so beautiful. Sister Muna, you see how she's looking beautiful, like an African woman? This is who we are. You see, Sister Augusta, this is who we are. We, we don't entice men who we, we package everything and throw it in the main room. That's not who we are. If everything is already on the main room, which one are you leaving in for the man to imagine? You have been asking everything now. Everything is out there. It's for everybody, public appearance. <laughs> we are now uh, in the museum. They kept it in museums. museum. museum animal. <laughs> they didn't show. They didn't show with you. You bring out breasts. You bring this one. Everything. Everybody's seeing it. But society. No, 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 no. It's time for us to begin to go back to who we used to be. The, the world does not listen to people that cry and beg. They rather want you to be strong and smart. So that it's innovative to face your challenges. Like China, like India, like Taiwan. You remember in those days, they said, no, I don't want to make in Taiwan, no. But today they are in charge of electronics. Start from where you are. Group yourselves. Whatever you are, into, put yourself into groups. If all of you, like you study computer science, bring your friends together, like three, four or ten of you, form a company. Your doctor, whatever your gift is, whatever your talent is, whatever your profession is, go and look for other different so that you begin to think together, plan together. Think of what problem you need to solve in your problem so that you face that problem and solve it. Even if you're teachers, gather yourself together in this restoration that we have. There's nobody that will not have a role to play. We tell you all the time that you are stakeholders. We are not looking for followers. You are not looking for the. There's no nation where they built it by the people sitting down and following one woman or following one person. No, 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 no. You have to be part of what is going on. We all have our roles to play in your own area where you are. Look for a problem to solve in where you are. See, God has put that sense in you. If you can't do it alone. Get somebody that thinks like you. We can't work with everybody. But get the people that think like you. Come together and think of a problem to solve. Form cooperatives. Work on the ground. Don't need to make noise. Move. There's no time. We don't have time to waste anymore. So it's time for us to move and restore our land. Like my sister is wearing, said, Biafra audacity. It's time to make that bold move. It's time to take that bold step with your friends, whatever it is, solve a problem today. Thank you very much. Yes, my dear, it is called Biafra Audacity. If you are ready to join the movement called Biafra Audacity, this is the time. Start working from your neck of the woods. Sell Biafra market, Biafra, 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 or Biafra, Biafra force. Suck it to our enemies. We are not going anywhere. We are the true children of Chukwokika Biyama. We have recognized who we are, and we are here to take back what belongs to us. Suck it up. You know, we're not going anywhere. So, my people, it is time to call in. Our number remains the same. Our numbers remain the same. 281 plus 1, 281 And our direct line is 774-338-0942. We want to uh, apologize for the interruptions today. You know, the devil and their, his cohorts or his associates, they know that we have something good for our people. And, of course, they have to find a way to separate it the most important thing about today's topic is the foreign interest. Recognizing that this foreign interest is against your survival. Recognizing the little, little things that they put in our environment, in our food, in our air, everywhere, in order to diminish the abilities of this brain. So whatever it is, take uh, get rid of it. Like my sister said, the reason why God put us in the Garden of Eden is because he knew that we would need all those resources around us. There is no reason for us to abandon what God has given to us and be looking for what belongs to somebody else. Our person right? So our food is good for us and it works for us. Um, we have yes. a caller. We forgot to do our ad. <laughs> that is. Yes, call out your name and where you're calling from. Yeah, good morning. Uh, my name is Paul Ezela. I'm calling me. from uh, Virginia. Yes, yeah, welcome. Oh, welcome to our program. Thank you. I just want to 
just want to thank you guys for what you've been doing. You know, especially those guys on the ground. You know, at war front, that's how you used to, you know, you know, put it. Right. You know, I think I want to do that. fact, that was few. You know, but all I'm asking is that, please, you guys should hook me up uh, to any branch in uh, Virginia State. That's where I live. Okay. I'm just pleading. No yeah, worries. I don't want to stay more. You know, maybe next time if I call, I contribute to your program. Thank you. And God bless right. you. Bye. All right. Thank you much, Nick. I'll save your number. Um, all right, so I was uh, running my mouth. Let's run our commercial for a few minutes. We wanted to play our uh, song, Tetano uh, Nora, and then we'll start taking phone calls, you know. Um, first of all, we wanted to run this ad about PAC, which is an important part of anyone in diaspora. You need to have a political, some type of political action committee group that is lobbying your government wherever you may find yourself. A good man leaves inheritance for his children. Have you created a sustainable future for your children? Have you laid the foundation for your children? Have you formed a strategic alliance with those that matter? Join the iPad. The answer to all our questions. Oh, yes, this is for my sister Christy Ibokwe Tetano Nora. Again, once again, let's enjoy it for a few minutes and then we'll start with our phone calls.
Thank you, Muchineke, the Tenonora. This is our late sister, Christine, uh, um, Christy Ibuwe. So uh, thank you so much for that song. The Tenonora, we really have to move. Like we said, it's time for phone calls. Our number again is plus one two eight one six four three seven two eight three. Our direct line is plus one seven seven four three three eight zero nine four two. You can also reach us on Messenger, Munachi, Justice, or Biafra, or Pala. You can reach us on Biafra, I mean on Skype, Biafra, we may show. And uh, you can call us direct or WhatsApp. So please call in, give us your two cents. Today we are talking about the effects of foreign interests in Africa. The effects of foreign interests in Africa. We know that the foreign interests, even their foreign aids, you know, when they're giving us aid, they're taking something back. So nobody uh, gets any free aid from any foreign country. Uh, here in America, I don't know what's going on now is what they call quid, quid pro quo. It's so weird. So talking about, you know, you give me this and I give you this. So corruption has been prevalent everywhere. But for some reason in Africa, you know, each time you mention Africa, they say corruption. But guess who is fueling this corruption? The same foreign uh, interest, the same foreign uh, leaders, the same foreign inv invaders. They are the ones that recognizes that these people are not, you know, they recognize that these people are not uh, taking care of our people. They are not using the resources the way they're supposed to use it. But each time you turn around, they will give them more resources and then come on TV uh, or come to the public and pretend as if they are working for our interest. You know, Bill Gates has given uh, so much money to uh, the zoo country. And nothing has come of it. But he will brag about, oh, foreign aid is good. Give foreign aid. Foreign aid for what? Foreign aid for you to keep stealing the things that you need to build your Microsoft software. What are you guys foreign aiding for? You know that it's not working. You're not putting things in place to make it work. There is no checks and balances. You don't ask, okay, I gave you 50 billion. What is it that you have done with the 50 billion that I gave? You will give another one and come on TV and parade yourself as a, a foreign aid giver. We don't want any more foreign aid. We want to be able to have the destiny of our, our future in our hands and take care of our children because we know what to do. We know what to do. These so-called foreign invaders, they have accumulated so much wealth that they can brag that their children in the next 100 years will continue to survive and thrive. What do we have? We have Mediterranean Sea to die. We have the uh, desert to die in. We have the oil nobody wants to work. We have the uh, uh, under the bridge in Europe to sleep or uh, to sleep under. We have all these negative things that are happening to our people, and nobody is making any sense out of it. You know, people are busy doing one thing or the other. And then you talk about our brothers and sisters that are doing well. They're in a position of wealth to take care of some of these things. What they did, they joined Umu Queens. So they joined these so-called foreign invaders because they are not investors. They call joining these foreign invaders to continue to subjugate our people. And then all we have from them is to wait for a bag of rice. Oh, it's Christmas, what, 25 days before Christmas. Bag of rice, for them to give us bag of rice with seven children. I see if it's going to last us the whole year. And if you're lucky, you may get a, a, an oil, coconut oil or something, some oil on top of it. We don't want any more handouts. 
we are capable of taking care of ourselves. We have proven to the world, anyone that thinks that African is a monkey and a baboon and all that stuff, we prove to you guys that when we are given the same opportunity, when we are given the same condition that we do, we will we survive. So obviously nobody is a monkey or nobody is a baboon here. The Chinese are not smarter than we are. We work seven jobs. We uh, 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 take care of our families. We take care of the people back home because the kind of stress, especially for black women, the kind of stress that we black women carry around, no other race will survive it. They will just die. They will just die because I see them every day, just a little tiny job to do, they are falling apart. They will just die. We are forced to take care of our brothers and sisters at home. We are forced to take care of our parents' side, our mother's side, our work side, our neighbor's side, our church side. It's all on, a, especially on a black woman. When you so-called black men leave us in a dark continent and we are the, at the bottom of the uh, human pool, guess what? We, the African women, are the lowest of them all. And we're saying it's enough. He said, no, people need to wake up and do the nefo. People need to wake up and be able to speak up and begin to fight some of those demons that we find amongst us. And that's why we are calling our mothers today to stay away from Maggie. Anything that has made our men to remain uh, a dosa, where they see the, the future of their children being destroyed, all they can do is to gossip on the phone and sit around and hear one person doing it and they do all this thing and think if I donate $60 a month, I'm done for the, for, the, for the struggle. Please, let's stop kidding ourselves here. So whatever we mothers can do to wake up our men so they can start to fight the, for the future of our children, that's what we need to do. And it begins with Maggie or Royko, I don't know what it's called, Rocco, is it Rocco? No, whatever all these foreign things that you're putting in your system, get rid of it. When we every morning here, man, I attack kilo. Let's see if I don't have it. And when I eat it, it takes a well. When we hold it, the stomach just stay, just calm, okay, calms everything down here. Nothing like nausea, nothing like it tastes funny, nothing. He takes care of all of that. Go and tell me one American drug that you can take that will do that for you. As a matter of fact, I introduced one of my patients to it yesterday. <laughs> he said he's going to look for an African store to get one. <laughs> So we have the resources, we have the things that we need to take care of ourselves. We have a way to take, the, God has given us all the things that we need to address all our problems, but we chose to go and even get the foreign things to invade ourselves, invade our systems. And at the end of the day, we don't have the resources. When you follow Americans to drink all the sugar, when you follow Americans or uh, 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 Westerners or whoever you want to call them to eat all the food that they eat, guess what? Any little thing that happens to them, they are in the ER. They have been evaluated. You yes, yourself. I'm going to come in shortly. Yes. I'm coming briefly, sorry. Yes. You know, the food, you are talking about the food that we eat. If you, if you go back home, it's uh, basically the very rich people are the ones that get this diabetes, you know, the, at least the type 2 diabetes. You see very rich people having that type of disease. And if you come to America here, it is very, very prevalent among the commoners. You know, and why do we say the rich people back home? Because they're the ones that buy these canned foods. They're the ones that buy this processed meal. They're the ones that buy this in me two minutes. They're the ones that buy this uh, small, small, uh, uh, two minutes. You put in the microwave, bam, it's done. They're the one, you know, so the rich people. They don't eat that. Home. They don't eat that. No, no, I mean, back at home. These oh. Go, they go in there. Right, the right, 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 right. Nonsense. And they end up with all types of type 2 diabetes. But the, the very poor people here are the ones that buy, you know, because that very those things are cheaper here for the poor. The rich people, if you go to their communities, you have all foods. You have all these big, big, you know, organic uh, stores up and down. And if you go to the poor communities, you have the large Walmarts. You have the 99 cent store. You have the, you know, or just the way it has been dispersed. So the truth about it is that our people back at home, we, the, the herbs that uh, Sister Ego was talking about, it's everywhere. You can easily find in town, you can easily find on you can find all those things every corner of your home. I remember in those days, we, but my, we have a, a funny kind of pantry where my mother has everything stocked out. So anything in there she sees, you must add all those ingredients. Until today, I still cook with Ogiri. 
I cook with me. I cook with all this. I, I have to testify, Sister Augusta's soup is all that plus a bag of chips. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know agree. I didn't know agree was your secret. Okay, now we know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I have it. So I cook with all this in here in America. I just thought my kids love it. Even though you smell there's the moment that soup is delicious. It is. You understand? So is. They, uh, we need to start getting up of our eye or sister. Start, you know, stop this job that we are doing is not making sense for us. It's killing us. It's killing us. So let us go back to our we are start using all those terms. They are medicinal. This thing they talk about allergy, allergy. I've never experienced it. Once I have allergy or whatever it's called, once you make pepper soup and drink, because you have otazi, you have uda, you have all these ingredients in your pepper soup. Once you drink it, bam, allergy, allergy. It's true. You know? So if you imagine those of us here, every little thing, everybody has inhaler, everybody has um, a bush raw that they, with the nebulizer machine. What if no law? We don't have all those kind of things. Don't you think that half of the uh, uh, community would have died by now? Mm -hmm. But it's because our poor people are eating everything from the farm that is organic versus the rich that are always going to shop right to go and buy some sophisticated God knows what. So we need to get back to our rules. That's what we're trying to say in essence. So that we can get ourselves off of these diseases that don't make sense. Absolutely. Thank you, sister absolutely we have to get we have to, the most important thing is that once we start telling ourselves that we are enough because this inferiority complex i'm telling you it has done a number on us we are dishonest with ourselves the worst thing that can happen to a man is you you are alone by yourself at home you go and look at yourself in the mirror nobody's there you still lie to yourself just know that you're finished please we really have to wake up we know we you got we didn't do this to ourselves we did not do this to ourselves, so we have to forgive ourselves. We really have to like give ourselves permission to say, hey, we have done whatever we did before, but now we know better. And these are the things that we are calling our sisters and brothers to do, to have that honest conversation with yourself and get rid of this thing, like my sister would say, clean out this thing, clean out the junk that they put in here, put that I am enough in it, and move with your Biafra audacity. And that will take us to, you know, it will take us a long way. Sister, please go ahead. Yes, yes, my sister. It is time for us to go back to who we used to be. Because like we said, these are harmful foreign cultures and practices that have brought us down from a place of glory to a place of disgrace. He built us well, physically, emotionally, mentally, and otherwise. And then he put us in the best part of the world. Good weather, good run, everything is perfect. Where we are, the description of the Garden of Eden, that's it. It's so fertile, our land is so fertile that if you just eat mango and throw it outside, it will just germinate. Our enemies knew this before us and came in and gave us faith. And took the real. By the time we slept and woke up, we had fake, and we are all now fake. So the first part of restoration, because Biafra is coming. We know that it's already here. Biafra is already here. But we want you to be part of it. We don't want you to be a spectator, as if you're watching football. We want you to be a stakeholder in what is going on. Is a nation we want to build. And because of that, every Biafran is a stakeholder. And your part in this is to begin to eliminate foreign, harmful cultures and practices right from your family. Even Fulani's own, the one that Fulani gave to you. Those things that are harmful to you, we've told you, harmful to your brain, that it makes your brain not to work. Everybody is shouting, oh my people, you have common sense, can't you see, can't you see? We are not seeing because they've damaged our brain. And we say, mothers, please, begin to change what you feed your family. Those spices, those foreign spices, there are chemicals in them brain damaging chemicals. Like my sister said, 
They need us to be putting it small, 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 small over a long period of time. So the cumulative, cumulative effect is done the look. We didn't even know we were poisoning ourselves. Mm -mm. We didn't know. And we noticed that here, they don't use it to cook food. Mm -mm. If you want to buy it here in foreign land, you go to international aisle. And that's where they keep it. It's for you guys. It's for you guys. <laughs> the monkeys and the baboons. <laughs> uh, for the monkeys and the baboons. <laughs> so over a period of time, you became monkeys and baboons indeed. And that are pumping you with that one, they're bringing in bioterrorism, they're bringing in a Ebola, they're bringing the genetically modified Ebola virus, they're bringing in HIV, they're bringing in all these viruses. Chicken flu, bird flu, um, pig flu, all these things are targets to destroy you. They are man made. It's not Chico Ike that made them, they are man made. The ones that Chico that came natural for like an ecosystem to balance the ecosystem, those ones your body can deal with them. Mm -hmm. They're not foreign. Mm -hmm. Your body has been built to right. destroy them. Right. Even just washing your hand can take care of them. But these ones are genetically modified, it's pure bioterrorism. Okay, now they are burning our markets. They are burning our houses. They are burning everywhere. That is economic sabotage. Economic terrorism. That's what it is. Financial sabotage. Because they see that you're so resilient. They are making you to kill you, to destroy you. But you keep coming back. Coming back, bouncing back. Everything they throw at you, you grab it and come back. We don't want to be passive anymore. We want to be very active. So we have plans. Be proactive to defend yourself. Part of defending yourself is making sure that you eat the right thing so that your brain can process information very well. Mm -hmm. If not, no matter how someone is talking to you, you'll be doing you don't the look. Even when it's obvious that somebody is strategically killing you. Hmm. When we say, let's go and form the other, I say, no, we are one Nigeria. You are who is one Nigeria? It's not me and you. So we're saying, as you're denouncing your Nigerianness, begin to remove the foreign harmful practices. We talk of false religion because this is, they turn the Bible, like someone will say, it's written in the Bible, thou shall not kill. How come the person that is bringing Bible to you is killing, killing you? He's <laughs> killing you. Yes. Yes. It says that this is the first ten commandments. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. The person that is bringing the Bible to you is killing and stealing. That means he did not read it. He didn't read it. No, he, he read it. So he Bible. read it. He's trying to use it for his business as a strategic business tool. That's all he's doing. Exactly. <laughs> he's a strategic business tool for them. But mind you, they even stole that Bible too. Because the Bible did not come from them either. Mm -hmm. They found the Bible. They got it from the disciples and Yeshua Hamashiach. These are scriptures written by Jews. So they discovered them and found them as a tool to use to kill others and destroy them. And even in that Bible, Chukwokike warned us. He said, well, be careful, my children. The enemy is coming to kill, steal, and destroy. Mm. He warned us. He did. But the problem is that we did not even read the book. We don't even read the scriptures. Because if you read it, you would have known that there are codes in it. Chukwokike put codes in the scriptures. He said, the enemy, Lucifer, Satan, is masquerading like an angel, an angel of light. You should be careful. Please, my dear, when they call, when they call, come, let me know. Right. Is it coming in? No, no, go ahead. So, try to warn us ahead of time that don't think you are calling an angel is actually your enemy. Then he just masquerading. Brainwashed you into thinking that is the best thing that happened to you. No, he's not. It's not the best thing that happened to you. It's time, my people, to begin to change things around. And we said, part of this, we said, we should form yourself into small, small groups. 
problem-solving small small groups. We are not talking about the freedom fighting group. That's IPOB. That's one is settled, is established. We are not talking of problem-solving little little things. You know your profession. You know what talent you have. You know the gifts you have. Movie production, music production, anything at all. You know your talent. Begin to find those that think like you. So that if we start solving problems around us, we have cried enough. The world does not like people that sit down and cry and beg and say, please now nah, help us, please now nah, help us because how good we're going to. When Ekwensu is facing you, you don't cry to him. You stand up and face him and bring him down. That's what you do to an enemy. Mm -hmm. Crying to an enemy and begging an enemy to help you is a waste of time. Because he's an enemy. His target is to kill you. It's okay to shout and cry and tell the world to listen and all that. That's okay. But after you have done that, you need to go home and strategize. Or what to do to eliminate your enemy. And we have said part of that is taking away the harmful tools that the enemy gave to you. Either you take it away or you modify it. You modify it. To your advantage. You yes. You modify it the way that it will be useful to you. So take your Bible. We're not saying stop being Christian. Go and read the Bible. Don't just carry it and move around like a fool. There are even your own brothers who study with the Bible and you are there following them. Go and read that book. Go and read it. Nobody is inside it. When somebody comes to tell you that your neighbor is a thief or is a, is a witch or is a wizard, he tells you, oh yeah, you have the power of God. Go and cast him out. You go and meet that my neighbor. Go and deliver him. Okay, my brother is my witch, but okay, you have the power to deliver him. So go and deliver my brother so that my brother will be fine. Don't come and tell me that my brother is a witch, is a wizard, I can't talk to them, I can't relate with them. No. Everything that is causing divide, division in our midst, we have to take it out. We have to come together as brothers and sisters. Work together. We have a common enemy. We have a common enemy. So why can't we work and target the common enemy? Stop targeting your brothers and sisters. They are not your enemy. Target the enemy. Anything you're doing, whether you're speaking English, whether you're manufacturing, whether you're doing whatever, let it be towards self survival, self liberation, and then to eliminate what the enemy has given to you that is not working for you. Begin to rediscover who you are, who to cook you can make you to be, so that we can go fast to where we're going. Thank you very much. Thank you much, Nike. To me, this is a case of, you know, our topic today, if you're just joining us, is the effects of uh, foreign interests in Africa. And this is a case of someone sitting, it's like, you know, I gave Sister Augusta example the other day. I'm sitting in my house and I look at Sister Augusta's house and I like everything that is there. I like her cars. I like everything. And I showed up to her front door. Sister Augusta, being a child of God, she opened the door, welcomed me. I lied. I said, oh, I'm your neighbor. I came to say hi. She allowed me to come in and, you know, try to give me cola. As she goes into the restroom to use the restroom, I lock her up in there and killed her and took all her positions. That's what these foreign invaders did, these so-called people with foreign interests. And nobody is talking about that. Nobody is talking about what they did to our forefathers of taking them to come and work as slaves for them. They continued after 500 years to have a common wealth interest in our land an interest a common wealth interest that is killing us a common wealth interest that is not benefiting us then they turn around and parade took all our resources turn around and now give us aid so that the good men of women of the world will say well good government at least they're helping africans they are not helping us americans they are not helping us people they are stealing our resources and turning around and massaging the hearts of the public as if they are giving us aid. We don't want any foreign aid. What we want is mutual respect. What we want is for you guys to leave our continent for us, for us to take our destinies into our hands and make something greater future for our children. And it's not too much to ask. So time has come for us to begin to let the American public or the public to know what their government is doing. 
Because when you hear foreign interest, like my sister Augusta said, you hear foreign interest, you're thinking, oh, yeah, or oh, American interest. American interest. What does American interest mean? Does American interest mean that other people will die in order for Americans to leave? And we are talking about people's resources. It's not like these other people are stealing American resources. Americans are going, or whoever, all these foreign invaders, they're going to take what belongs to somebody else for the interest of Americans. I don't think every day Americans want to hear that. They are not interested in you killing people for their own resources in order for Americans to survive because America has all the resources to survive. That's why they're struggling with obesity. They have more than enough. And if you think about it, God is giving them back that in the punishment of obesity. No matter how much they spend in healthcare, spend everywhere, they're still at the lowest when you look at all the third world, I mean, all the uh, so called first world countries or the other uh, countries. Stop stealing what belongs to somebody else. If you're going to give an aid account, seek for an account for your aids. Put checks and balances. Insist that the aid be used for the betterment of the populace. And not for you to get a favor from the government. You give them more gun. Each time there is an African president that is dead or whatever, arrested, the first thing they will say, they stash millions and trillions in their houses. Any of them, the ones that they put in Swiss account that nobody goes after. Right now, Switzerland uh, offers education to their uh, citizens all the way to university. Because of all the stolen monies from all the African uh, presidents that nobody came to claim back. So their citizens can, and by the way, they smoke marijuana too. They still legalize there, so you can smoke marijuana and go to school. Happy Gando, they are living life. And these are the monies that they send from our own side. Put in their own country, I mean, put in their own bank, and nobody went back to account for it. Who are you, monkey and a baboon? The person that put the money there probably stole the money. So what, what legality would you have to come and claim it when you're done with your presidency? So they figured, oh, the one that I put in Switzerland, I can't get access to it, so let me start stashing them in my house. And then them, them and their children will start their own overconsumption. God has enough resources on this universe for everyone to succeed and survive. And then the same group of people will turn around and tell us about uh, uh, human rights, having children. How are you telling me to have kids when all you have in store for my kids, children, is to die? I don't understand. Why do you want me to go through the nine months of pregnancy when all you have in store for my children is not to survive? is to go and be eaten by a vulture at the, at the uh, 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 they can't even, the vulture can't even eat the one in, on the desert, right? Because it's dry. Let's be honest with ourselves. We have to be honest with ourselves. We are calling on Americans, good men and women of this universe, because we know they are. For you to begin to ask your senators and your government what they are doing in Africa to keep Africa in poverty. What is it that they're providing in Africa that have left, that caused us to leave our country? Because people will say, oh, go back to your country. We are not going back because you stole all our resources. Give us back our resources. Go back where? You and your forefathers went there and destroyed it. So there's nothing for us to go back to. You took all our stuff, gave it to your kids, overconsumed our stuff. If you want lunch, you can fly from here to, uh, uh, to Paris to go and eat lunch. And all I'm asking is for me to live in my little touch house, go to work and take care of my children, even if it means we're eating rice every day. And the so-called foreign invaders, have, they have made it impossible for people to, to survive. Go and look at the borders of America here. All the South Americans are here all over the place trying to come in because their country is not stable. Every time you turn around, they have some idiot that they know very well cannot manage their country. They will put them in charge, give them their foreign aids, and all they can do is to deal with their people. And then when they want to run away from the chaos you have created, you say, I want to build a wall. Eh? So I guess only you will survive. We are tired of this. We are tired of this. If only our brothers and sisters will wake up and make the same demand. If only our brothers and sisters will wake up and ask questions and intensify the efforts in getting these people to be answerable to us. 
because they are not. Nobody wants to die. Either way, you're going to die. Either they kill you by starvation or they kill you by poverty or they kill you by you traveling out to the Mediterranean Sea or going through the back door to come to their country. One way or the other, you will die. Why don't we die restoring our lands? Or oh, harvest the organs. Or oh, harvest the organs. Right? Or oh, harvest the organs. Why don't we die restoring our lands? So that our children, children will not have to go through the same thing. So they'll have the same uh, uh, war stage to perform like other children. Because I know they are, they are more than capable. Not only have we given them the wisdom to do what is right, we have also offered them the mental toughness. They are not going to run in the bathroom to cry in the midst of a, a hardship because we eat hardship for breakfast and lunch and dinner. That's why we can come here with a suitcase and we survive. You keep a job. You may live in a place, you go to school. We've told these stories over and over again because Chukwokika Biyama has endowed it in us. But we don't want to live in a world where all we have to do is to eat mental toughness for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or hardship. While other people are drinking, uh, what is that, the expensive coffee that they drink every morning? Starbucks. People will go and pay $13 to drink coffee every day. That's what you call overconsumption. The same $13 that can feed a family in Africa, people will easily hand it to another man to give them a cup of coffee in the morning. We are saying it's enough. This is our career. This injustice is too much. This overconsumption on one end is too much. We have to start getting people involved. We have to start telling people about our Biafra audacity to talk about what they have been doing to us. What they have been doing to us on a daily basis. Even when you're here working, your, your chances of a, a promotion, they are very limited. No matter how small you are. All we have uh, reduced ourselves to is earning degrees. You would degree each Biafran person who here, you get here with a nuclear weapons. Piling degrees upon degrees in order for us to be relevant. Whereas we are enough. We are enough just the way, we, even without the degree. We will be like a Zuckerberg. We can do, do move mountains with no degrees because the degree, the computer, he is already here. Now they have reduced us to degree number one, degree number two, degree number three. In order for you to get a job, somebody with high school degree here will get. And if I, you're I, lucky... I wonder, the degree, they don't come cheap. Remember, student loan. My dear. And then you, they put you in poverty from, from in student poverty. loan. Exactly. So you will, be, you will still be paying back to them. And let me explain this. How you pay your student loan is very, very tricky. They give you like a 30 year range or 15, depending on how you consolidate your, your loan. It will take forever to pay. Obama paid off his loan in 2004. Uh, uh, Clinton paid off, I can't remember when he paid. So, they, what, what these people are doing, they will continue to allow you to hit, hit, hit degrees upon degrees. Zero. It may have no PhD, it's not take a PhD, so that you can become relevant. And, you know, honestly, we don't even need all that. Mm -mm. We don't need that many degrees to be able to articulate what we want. Because this already, God gave it to us in quantum. So we don't even need to do all that in the first place. And that is why we are telling everybody to be part of this struggle. Because in as much as, you know, fine, we are in a, in a civilized world, supposedly civilized, as far as I'm concerned, what we need is civilized that I see. Because virtually everything we do here is what we were doing back at home. So, if we don't start being part of this struggle to let everybody know tom dick harry know that we are talking about a country that will be sustainable to the african people to the biafra and even to the african americans living in the united states because guess what once we have uh biafra african americans will start doing their dna like how man the particular village they are already doing it they will start yeah they're already doing it so they would want you know where is that village in Hawashi? They won't mind going, selling up whatever they have here to go and have rest. Because it's not, it's no longer funny. It's no longer funny. So these people have systematically, they have systematically dried us. They have systematically been pillaging our resources for years or centuries. And 
and the way it's looking at this, I think we cannot stop them. But the truth about it is that we can. All we have to do is voice out our opinions and let them hear that, hey, we're joking this time around. We want what belongs to us, not what belongs to the world. So we need to start articulating because God has already given this to us and it doesn't come cheap. So packing degrees upon degrees doesn't end the door. It, 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 it impoverishes you the more because you have to you make your first degree. A one word is a guy for your master's. You will not pay for the one to pay. By the time you will have your student loan can, can build 10 mansions in the in, in Biafra land. Yeah, well. My dad so, didn't even think about the student loan. When you're, you're right. So <laughs> as we are piling this degree, we are also piling debt. That will keep That's you right. down. It, keeps, it gives me sleepless nights because what I'm paying in my loan, oh my God. If I send it back at home, I would have built 10 factories by now. I'm not kidding. So it, 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 it drains us all. It drains us all. And we need to start figuring it out. Thank you, sister. It's crazy, my sister. It's crazy. That's why again and again and again, we want our brothers and sisters to wake up. Because if our brothers and sisters say wake up and start making the same demand and start looking this way right in the eyes and letting them know that, you know, even the thing they do here is even massage problem. They know how to solve it, but they're massaging it to get more pro to get more money out of it. They know that if you shoot this way, you will shoot that tree and the tree will be on the floor, but it will be shooting like this, you know, in order to get more money and be shooting and shooting before they can finally shoot down the tree. It's all about money, not that they don't know what to do. We Biafrans, we don't like to massage problems, especially the Biafran women. I am sure I hope problem will solve it. Or some people that play games, when they see problems, they will start playing politics. We don't romance with problems. We don't have time to no. romance with problems. Cha, cha, cha. We don't. We demolish the problems. Sister, if you go ahead. No, but it's true. That's why Chipotle okay, created us. He brought us here to solve problems, not to romance problems. Every day you're lamenting, hey, well, hey, well, hey, well. no, that's not who we are. That's misplaced identity. We have common sense to solve problems. That's why, like that video that leaked, he said that Chukwokike has given, um, that God has given Biafrans, you know, he used Igbos, the template to survive in this world. That's why, as an evil person, you can survive anywhere in the world. Because you are giving us the common sense to survive. We don't even do that with degrees. The degree is to function in uh, the white, white man's world. Because that's what they did to keep us trapped. Pursuing degrees and important things are going away. Yeah, well, why they are sucking we oil? Are we are busy reading in their library, and I suck oil and I suck our resources. And we're busy in their library researching and clicking on the computers and turning dissertations and theses and all kinds of nonsense. And there are people are working with high school education. Go and look at That's the most it. educated. We are the most educated fools that they have in America. Are you Bruce? Fools. And as Sister Augusta mentioned it, plus loans on top of it to keep you down. And you're thinking, oh, yeah, if I read long enough, if I study this long enough, you'll be relevant. The only person that will make you relevant is you. You, mm -hmm. you, 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 you will make yourself relevant. So begin now to get that spirit, major that spirit now to come out of you and make you relevant because no degree will make you relevant here. No onyocha will make you relevant here. No continent will make you relevant. It's Africa continent that will make Africa relevant. Sister, your name and where you're calling from. My name is Chinere Apu. I'm calling from Houston. I'm originally from Mpah. But it's an Abia province. Thank you for what you're doing every Saturday for your hard work, your effort to make our our precious land, Biafra, to be restored. And I believe for sure that in the name of Chukoki Kapiyama, we're going to be free. So concerning your topic today is very interesting yes first of all i will start by saying that the white men have come to our land to steal you know how the bible said it i'm making an analogy from the bible where it says the devil has come to steal and to kill and to yeah that is the white man for you there's the same people who came into our land and 
you know, gave us the Bible, gave us Christianity in order to uh, brainwash us and make us weak. And behind the scene, they're stealing our resources. They stole our resources, they killed our people, they enslaved us, they, they enslaved our mentality, weakened us. And when we see a white man, we worship them, we say, oh, beke wabara, beke wabara. We don't even know that they, they envy us, mm -hmm. okay? Without the resources they stole from Africa, they are nothing, you understand? Mm -hmm. and, and yet, you see what people die in the Mediterranean Sea because of the suffering. Their hands are, they, they are part of the suffering that our people are going through in that contraction called Nigeria, especially. They are commanding and controlling everything that concerns our resources, our joy, our, our tradition, our customs. They have come, stolen it, and changed our mentality from what, we, what it used to be to now, to, to a zero mentality. Like we all fools, you know? They command our economy, they control us, like, you know, in the government of Nigeria, for example. You know what is going on now? They are Islamizing our, uh, the country, Nigeria. And they are, these white people, they are so, they are so evil, I'm telling you. They are so evil. They will come and tell you, okay, uh, God loves you. When somebody slaps you on one cheek, turn the other cheek so that, you know, they can slap you again or turn the other cheek. Mm. Just to weaken our mentality. And they come, they go, supply, who, who is supplying the full of this, the, the, the arms and the ammunition they are using to kill Christians? Is it not them? Is it not Britain? Is it not Russia? Is it not this, or, 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 or you know people that our people are killing themselves for? They are the ones. Killing us, they are the ones controlling our economy. They are the ones killing our oil, and that is why when you tell them Biafra, they would not, you know, listen. They will turn the other way. CNN is not broadcasting anything about Biafra. Full of hate men are there in our land, killing our people. You understand? Yes. But one day, one day, eh? Monkey go go market, you never come back. You because say... we are the children of people Kikabiama. We must retain and have our freedom. You yeah. come here in the in abroad, they are controlling you. You work how many hours, and yet they will see you as an African with no sense. But we are smarter than them. But it's not for our people to change their mentality. Mm -hmm. All these things that are saying, okay, hellfire. Read the Bible, okay, hellfire. Is hellfire not meant for them as well? Are they not the same people who killed millions of, of our people back then, and they are still killing up until date, right? Mm -hmm. And they think, okay, hellfire. It's not meant for them. It must, it has fire, they are all hellfire, eh? The total that we fire, they hmm. have their hellfire. It, it's over too much, you understand? Oh, nuclear, so, nuclear, nuclear powered hellfire, call out. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Our people need to know who they are. They need to stand their ground and say no to all these intimidations and all these blah, blah, blah things that they're doing to, you know, to pull us down. And Biafra is our only hope. Let me tell you, Biafra is our only hope. Yes, dear. If you are a Biafra and you're not yet awake, oh no, I'm sorry for you. Yes. I don't even know what to tell you. Mm -hmm. You understand? Once we get our Biafra, we'll be able to control it ourselves. We don't need no collaboration from all these people. You, all we need is our freedom. We say enough is enough. Enough you is enough. Them, you, you, Yes, they will take foreign aid and, and, and whatever. They will come and give you immunization. Do you know that these immunizations they are giving our children? Do you know that it's poison? Yes, yes. Do you know? They are, they are the ones that are now exposing themselves. You make a research of that. You will see that they're doing it for a purpose. Mm -hmm. You know? They bring all these... Uh, before, growing up, I know that our people are so blessed, they are so strong. Nothing like diabetes. But do you know these days, our people now, back home, are suffering from diabetes. Why? Because they're indulging, eating all this sweet, all this uh, bon vita, privileges. They think it's life, right? They want to be white men. Right. Like right. it's for us. But our mm -hmm. people now are indulging all of those things, you know? So that is why a lot of us now are falling sick of diabetes. You know? He's crazy, my sister. Uh, my, my grandmother, my our ancestors, they never suffered any of this, you know? You're right. So, yes, it is, it, is, it is our job, you know, to wake yes. up. Our natural food is included enough. Our natural food is so organic. It's not like this, uh, 
GMO they do here. You know, they make GMO food, right? Yes. And and then they poison us in one way or the other. Yes, when we see them, we say, oh, bekei, bekei. Our people can... My dear, I learned, I learned the hard truth when I took my daughter home after I shipped everything from here, including water. This girl went and swim in the sand, thinking it was a swimming pool. Thought no one to. I'm not kidding you. And then they fed her all the food that was tried because here she was reacting to everything. So every day we have AP pen, AP pen, AP pen. By there, this girl went home, ate everything, swam in the Aja swimming pool, Aja. And nothing happened to her. Mate, yes, all the women be here and they put one more. Man, on a boy, people in a sterile shots. Every time they hear sterile, they don't want to be seen. I hear the news, even what I can have for cheer, Katie, they're not quite a lamb. My dear, up on the up on the bank, I'm just making my brain. Mother, that now he didn't lend the other one here. I'll be so she's 20 years old. I'm telling you, you know, back home, excuse me, I don't even know anything about Alex. I'm telling you, until I came here. Because they have genetically modified all the food. It is there, yeah, yeah, or, or poison. Yeah, I'm like, what is this allergy going on, right? Seriously, because back home we don't know anything about allergies until I came here. You know, I have to go and research what allergy means and the causes of allergies. So these are the things that they they give in our people, and we don't know out of ignorance. We know ignorance, but we are smarter than them, though. You know. Our people, uh, would I say it's inferiority complex or something? They don't know their worth and they think they, they don't know their they worth. They don't know their worth. You know, so, so you know, so like, like you know, back home, right? You, like all this, I uh, hear all this world uh, cup and uh, you know, they are all organic. But now you tell our people back home, go get some of Mbarogu back home, like us, you know. Use it and uh, drink for any kind of, it cures any kind of sicknesses. But the belief in white, in white drugs, and you know what they bring for our people is the expired drugs. You know, like I was talking to my mom the other day who was complaining of fever. I said, Mama, go get your stuff, uh, what is a uh, don't go yellow uh, leaves, right? Mm -hmm. Because those things are organic. Those, those are the, the things that our forefathers used. Yes. They never went Yes. They never took no drugs. They never get the, you know, but they use those natural drugs if they, that is if they ever felt sick. If they ever felt sick, right? Because mm -hmm. I don't think they even felt sick, but they still know through the, the grace of Chukwokikabia, but they still know how to use the organic Ahihia uh, Naboro, that is drugs and, and, and weeds and all of that to, to cure themselves with no doctor, no medication, whatever. You know, right. but our right. people want to to adopt the white man's life and it's killing them gradually you know so uh, that's my sister that's why we're here to educate them this is why we're here we come out here every Saturday whether we are dying or not dying to point out things mm -hmm. then because sometimes these things are very unsuspecting until somebody calls mm -hmm. it out to you be like oh my gosh you know I haven't even thought about mm -hmm. this so anytime exactly. we think about things that affects the the well-being of our people we'll continue to point to them that's why we want people to continue to share our videos, continue to share our topics. Because to you, it may uh -huh. seem like, oh, I already know that. But to other sisters and brothers out there, they have never even thought the fact that they're using Maggie, they could be diminishing the, the threshold of their family's uh, uh -huh. ca you know, capacity. Exactly. So, yes. Exactly. Let's, let's continue to share this video, people. It's very, very interesting. It's very educative. I remember in those days, you know, like the white bag, I don't know if they still produce it now. That white bag is a killer, right? So, but then we, we still use it. We still use it. And we don't know the effect of how, it, you know, the effect of it. I remember right. my mom, she used to watch with it, wash her clothes, her white uh, garments. Mm -hmm. She's the uh, say the same. The, yeah. The white magic. She, wa she washes her white tops and all of that. It's like, wow, magical. But that's the same thing we consume it. You know, that's the same thing we consume it. Uh, and crazy. many more, many it's more. Crazy. So it's crazy, my sister. Let, thank let you let so go. much. Uh, yes, thank uh -huh. you so much. We are it running out of that we are paying here. I'm not going to pay a house. You buy a house. And you'll be paying money. Mm. You'll pay it to the load. You'll be paying taxes on top of it. You mm. know, it's a way to, to rip us off. You're a, you're a, a slave to your debt. You got to put there one, whichever one that comes first. But look at the people. You have to have your partner now. You're 
My Biafran yes. activist, yes, thank you so much. He said, Sooner than later, we're going to be free from the shackles of white men, from the shackles of the job. Foreign invaders, foreign invaders with their foreign interests. Foreign invaders, yes. God bless you too. Thank you, Wachineke. Of course, you are so right. You know, we've come of age where we should know better now that when your enemy slaps you, instead of giving them the other cheek, you throw her nuclear weapon, you blow them all apart. Don't take, don't turn the other cheek. And we've been talking about their so called going to heaven. If we get to that heaven and that God brings off his uh, fire, I will be coming there with my own fire. And I promise him my complaint will be bigger than his own fire. Because you cannot put me in a dark continent all my life, punish me all my life, and then you want to bring me a fire. Mula that God will fight with that fire. We are not going to, we are not waiting for that nonsense anymore. So let them stop with the tricks. Their own God is wrong how I can fight in a chamber. I don't have any files because I have not done anything. These people here they have created hell for our people to be in while they are in, in their own heaven. They actually, if you ask me, I will tell you that the zoo called Nigeria is an experiment of what hell would be like, created by the British Empire and their evil entities. They literally created that place to say, an experiment, you know, they like to do uh, research is here. Let's put these people together and set them on fire and see exactly what will happen. Apparently, we are surviving. So I don't know if there's any God out there waiting for me to go to any, uh, any more hellfire like my brother, George Onibio, will say. No, 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 no. If God comes, my father will be coming with 50 billion truckloads of complaints. Heaven will not be able to contain that truckload. So let's stop kidding each other. Sisters, please, your final statement so we can close. Thank you. Thank you, my sister. Yeah, I mean, it's time for us to begin to uh, reevaluate what we have been practicing, what we call religion. Because there's no God that would put us in the situation He has put us, that we have found ourselves, and then somebody is recording and you are going to bring file and whatever, whatever. And it's the unfortunate thing is when you see the so called white man that created hell for other people. When they have a near death experience, they see Jesus, <laughs> they see heaven. <laughs> They see they already, they're already in power. heaven now. They're already in heaven. <laughs> I'm telling you. Then my own dear sister or brother that has suffered so much in the zoo called Nigeria, after worshipping whatever he was worshipping and not even staying at home to take care of his family, he's in the church with his pastor, he's feeding himself, all the food that the children will eat, he will take it to the pastor, take it to the church. When he finishes and goes to that place they're going, what will he see? Devil. You will see Lucifer. So if you live like devil, you will see devil when you die. So if you live in heaven, 
when you die, you see heaven. Hmm. So say that, say that again, sister. Say, say that again, please. <laughs> <laughs> I said, if you, my conclusion is that if you live like devil on earth, when you die, you see devil. Devil will receive you. But if you live like a life of love and a like heaven on earth, when you die, you see heaven. Hmm. So it's time for us to begin to create our own heaven on earth. So that when you die, you see heaven. Heaven will receive you. Mm -hmm. And we start that creation by understanding that Biafra is the kingdom of Chukwokika Biyama on earth for us, for Biafra. You are supposed to be a stakeholder to the building and restoring of that kingdom, not somebody else. Do not call your enemy to create kingdom for you. Do not call your enemy to create heaven for you. He does not want to create heaven. The only thing the enemy creates is hellfire. And you see, he has created it in two. You are the one that will create your own heaven. Begin to eliminate the tools of the enemy in your life, in your environment. The food they've given you. You call some of them Maggie, no. These things they give you to kill your brain cells, begin to remove them. The practices that are are, are, are not helpful to you, begin to remove them. Slap this chick and turn the other chick is from the devil. That person will kill you. Slap one chick, you give the other one, they will kill you. So it's time to run or defend yourself. That's the normal reaction. Begin to eat the right thing. Begin to dress like watching naked. Begin to behave. Begin to add dignity to who you are. You, do, you are enough. We have no audacity, my sister will say. And she will also say, you are enough. Begin to build your identity and your dignity. People watch naked. Begin to live like watch naked, not wear a suit. Begin to create heaven in your family, in your life, around you, and will restore Biafra. And when you die, you also see heaven. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sister Augusta, please. Yes, when you die, you will also see heaven, especially when you have lived your own heaven here on earth. You know, these people are very manipulative. And if you do not know that they are manipulating well, <laughs> you need brain, we need to scan your brain once again. You need a brain transplant. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, <laughs> we need to scan it. I don't mm. want to see your brain. Mm. So that is so, that is so, so true. You see, no, they have this mentality of self-preservation. We've talked about that before. That they have this mentality of self, my own is my own. They don't do we, they do I. That singular person, that is what it's all about. Me, and myself, so, and I. Me, myself, and I. Thank you. So they would go to every length, every length, regardless of how tedious it is, to get that thing that makes them comfortable. That's what they're going to do, because that is who they are. So what stops you and I? What stops you and I in identifying who you are? We've talked about self-preservation. We've talked about the identifying yourself and not making a jones of yourself. I watched recently on uh, Facebook, there's this um, uh, Anony actress, and she's a Biafran because she actually made me proud. She uh, was, uh, I think she asked an HBO, not a fan, but she uh, went to this uh, show that Martha Stewart and um, Snoop Dogg, this, uh, their morning cookery, whatever. And the girl came in, although she, she, uh, she identified herself as a Nigerian, but she indicated that she's actually an Igbo person. And she spoke Igbo. She was so proud to do that. And that is why we're talking about identity. We're talking about identifying yourself. We're talking about preserving yourself. And that is what Ndocha, that is what they do. So if you feel that they are bringing you financial aid, that is a blatant lie. While they bring you Red Cross and uh, uh, all these other um, NGOs, they are milking you dry. Their strategy is to create chaos where there's peace. And once they create chaos, they go under and milk whatever will benefit them. So we need to wake up. I know we are, we've already awake. We are, we are, a whole lot of us are, are awoken. But the fact is that we need to start doing at least the little, little things that you can do to restore what belongs to you. Your identity. That is very, very important that you start doing that. Recognizing who you are. And telling everybody that cares to listen. 
that this is who I am and that is not going to change. So we need to understand that, hey, these people that brought you heaven, they don't mean well. They just want to showcase that this is how heaven looks like. And in all truth and honesty, heaven really looks like America. And they give you hell and tell you that this is zoo. So we need to understand that no matter what we do, if we don't put our heart, our mind, our resources, our energy into restoring Biafra, we will continue in this quarrel for years to come. So let us do all that it needs. Let us do the needful, which is restoring our motherland. And it's not just for us, it's for our generations to come. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this Saturday. Absolutely, my sister. It's for generations to come. We are fighting for our children yet unborn. We do not want them to go through this hell that we are going through. We do not want them to suffer the same fate that we have suffered. We do not want them to leave the comfort of their own homes and go over 5 billion miles across the sea or across the world to, to have a decent life. Um, we are not saying that our, this place is the worst place on the face of the universe. We are just asking for people to revisit what they are doing in Africa. When you hear about the AIDS, there is something that whoever that is giving the AIDS is benefiting from. And whatever that benefit is, it's not for the benefit of our people. It's actually for their demise. So we are calling on lovers of freedom and defenders of equity and liberty to stand and be counted. We must understand that this struggle belongs to all of us. Every Biafran is a stakeholder. And I, of course, this Biafra restoration is our civic duty. We need to fight together facing one common enemy called Nigeria, represented by Fulani and other Biafrans against us. Do not sit down waiting for others. If we need orders, that will come in regards to the struggle. But if you have any common sense thing that you can do to promote Biafra, please do so. We want to be able to market Biafra to the world. We want to flood the market with Biafran stuff. You do not need to, uh, um, I mean, you do need to uh, boycott uh, Fulani's. Fulani goods and services, Aosa goods and services, anyone against us goods and services including of course the product that we talked about today maggie and the rest of them you do also need to stop attending churches against our freedom churches that are still hanging one nigerian flag in their churches you must uh, uh, avert those churches boycott all celebrities not using their voices to help our people because they know what is going on because they are still able to fly back and forth until they get rejected coming to america then they will realize they are stuck so, and then for those of them that are singing, I, you know, somebody sent me a song from Techno, how he's thinking about injustice going on. Yes, even if you don't want to come out and declare Biafra because you're worried about your income, we understand. But there's other ways you can sing songs about what's going on in the country. So those are the things that we are looking for. We're looking for, for activists to come from every nook and cranny of our country, Biafra, to ensure that these people know that we are serious. So like we said, we need you to market Biafra. We need you to paint yourself uh, businesses Biafra. Our business Biafra to everything that you're doing and we are good to go. We know that the Muslims, they have an agenda to rule the world. So from the beginning, they see the world as a battleground. Once they have their children, they start. They teach them to start fighting. They announce it and they divide themselves into different sections. Remember this, some of them are in politics, some of them are in business, some of them are in banking, some of them are out there marrying our daughters. Some of them have cattle around our, our neighborhoods. As they are full soldiers, they're just waiting for signals. Some of them are into terrorism. They are cutting people's neck off. Some of them are abroad studying. God knows what else they are doing. Some of them go even through their jihadists to learn how to kill and massacre people at will. The Fulani's assignment is to conquer Nigeria and dip their Quran in the Atlantic Ocean, and we are watching them complete it. Dear friends, wake up. The ten and Nora, dear friends, wake up. Dear friends, wake up. We cannot leave this struggle for one man or one woman. My, uh, we are not looking for followers. We are looking for freedom fighters, people that can get this thing done. Freedom fighters in different capacities. It could be the freedom, the, the ability to shoot. It could be the ability to sell products to other people and tell them about, other people and tell them about Biafra. Whatever you can do from your neck of the wood, please do so. We had a question of the week. I forgot to ask it. So we'll begin again next week. So I have a video posted for our new video. This video talks about uh, foreign, what the foreign aids also do in our land. All of this thing is in order to uh, uh, cement 
cement what we have talked about today for you guys to see it's not just us seeing, uh, seeing it there are other ways these people are poisoning what's going on in africa so thank you guys so much for joining us today do not forget to subscribe to our youtube channel it's called the daughters of truth their from women show share 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 with other people because overall we are looking to engage our people up here you know that's another thing that we want we love our brothers and sisters when they commend us so thank you for what you're doing for biafra we don't really want that which is okay you can thank us but we're looking to engage you in a conversation for you to ask us a, a question based on our topic for the day so that we can bypass so thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you even if you don't thank us we will continue to do this because we are the mothers of the land we are again doing this for the survival of our offsprings but we don't say we appreciate you now please and of course our brothers and sisters especially our brothers even though our show says be Afrong women show is for everyone do not be afraid to call in it's for everyone to call in i'm not sure what else if we need to do maybe we should remove the woman's show and just call it biafra show to make people more uh comfortable with call, calling in uh you know because we we got the signal two weeks ago when a brother texted or emailed and said uh, uh, can a, can men call in please it's open for everyone if this women's show uh, is causing confusion we may have to remove that so hopefully next week maybe you can help us indicate if we need to take away the women's show because we want this show to be for every biafra we are speaking to all our brothers and sisters our children our grandparents we're speaking to everyone we are all in this together we are doing this to ensure again the survival of our future offsprings we they cannot continue to go through this uh, 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 hardship we want their uh, mental toughness to be used to uh, expand the continent and not to use to uh, go through pain and suffering because that's what we have reduced our mental toughness to just pain and suffering because you have to in order to do something better in life you have to bypass the suffering first so we don't want to be caught up in just fighting for survival we need to go past that level of survival and begin to look to do other things to help humanity because that's what god put in us see that's what he puts in our heart and that's what we are very good at we love to help humanity each other we're in a position now where we can't even breathe so in order for us to do something else we have to get the oxygen and we do not want our children to be struggling for an oxygen in order for them to uh be at the worst stage with the rest of their peers so to end today's show i'm going to play our song Do 
we have freedom at last. Be a proud we you become a star in the world. So every nation who believes in freedom, come and help us. We cannot do it alone, we don't want war. We just want our own. To much like get your own Biafra audacity. Go out there and market Biafra to the world. Thank you. Till we see you guys again next week. We love you guys. And of course, my brother or is it Omei Cash that mentioned that they say thank you to all their women uh, uh, doing things for Biafra. Yes, we love the thank you. We love the thank you. But during this time, also we want to engage our people because we get so much thank you, thank you, and we don't really get things towards the topic that we are discussing. So that's why. But thank you. We love you too. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.